as we talk about the future of the social web, the undeniable force that women have become in e-commerce, of course, comes to mind. The question is, what is your opportunity as someone who is growing your own brand and your own sites? Today, we have two experts here to talk to you, Rochelle Parham and Nellie Bowles. Rochelle Parra is Chief Marketing Officer of eBay North America. She uses her rich experience in consumer and digital marketing to develop strategies and educate all marketing activities across the 100 million active eBay users on this continent, consumer product marketing, loyalty and relationship, global citizenship, search optimization, everything, she does it. In the past four years, she has particularly focused on initiatives to help eBay deliver a more socially connected user experience. I should also mention that as a marketing veteran who previously worked for Visa and Digitas, she has served on the board of directors for Scripps Network Interactive. She was recently nominated to the board of trustees for Drexel University, and she is a strong and personally very passionate advocate for inspiring and empowering the next generation of women leaders, particularly eBay's Women's Initiative for North America and STEM programs like Girls Who Code. Thank you. Nellie Bowles, who works at Recode with CEO Kara Swisher, I first began to read when she was a technology reporter at the San Francisco Chronicle. She has recently been recruited to Recode as a hot new recruit covering tech, culture, and trends. And she also is one of the few journalists I know who was a Rhodes finalist and a Fulbright <laughs> scholar in her past. Enjoy. <laughs> You got to get that out there, though. Come on now. Yes. No, <laughs> no skills from Swaziland really apply right here, I It's think. all right. Um, so let's get right down to it. I love it. Thank um, you. Welcome, guys. I'm very excited to be here. Um, so we're here to talk about social e-commerce and um, sort of about how online influencers can, can monetize on that influence. And the first thing I want to ask you about, kind of okay. in keeping with our theme for the morning, apparently, okay. um, is about the Kardashian app. Um, yeah. I don't know how many of you know about this, but it's it, one of the most popular apps in the Apple Store. It's, it's set to, to make Kim Kardashian of $100 million or $80 million this year. Um, and I'm just wondering, what does that mean to you as sort of a, a top marketing exec in tech? What does that mean? And what, what can we learn from that? I have no idea what that means. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand. I don't, I, just to be honest with you, I don't understand. What I do know is that they are a machine, and they have figured out how to monetize everything they do. They're going to monetize drinking water, I'm telling you. Like, so good for them. I haven't, I haven't looked at the app. Congratulations to them. You're not playing to it? To her. I'm not playing it. Um, I'm sure it's a lot of fun. And, you know, Godspeed on making that cash. That's all I can say, right? So um, I, I wish I had an answer. But what I can tell you is, um, is they're using celebrity to drive revenue. And that's been working for them. Mm -hmm. And that's all I know. Yeah. Fair enough. I, and I start with the Kardashian app just because it's funny, but it also can mean something. And, yeah. And yeah. is sort of interesting. And, Kind of stepping back, what is social e-commerce? Yeah. What are we seeing? What's happening? So, so how I think of it, I, so e-commerce is a $10 trillion industry. Mm. This is about the blurring of the lines of online and offline, yeah. and it's how do you actually drive commerce uh, through interactive channels, be it website, be it mobile, whatever it is. And this is an important time, because never in our history have we seen kind of people, kind of grassroots, uh, able to actually drive commerce from their couches at home or from mm -hmm. their kitchen tables. And what I've seen is that there are people like you every day who have become real influencers, who are passionate about a particular area, and they have become experts in those areas. And what they have done is created a voice. And that voice is because of their passion, because of uh, their knowledge, and it's something that is 
has become very, very powerful. And that power is, is one that's actually being used everywhere. Yeah. So how I think of it is, you know, there are millions of people who are following people like you, and you help them to make decisions. You help them to decide what they should buy, what they should care about, uh, what are those hot trends, what are, you know, what's the best and fair price for whatever they want to get. And you're really helping people to connect um, to those things that they really need. And for us, as a brand like eBay, we have a bunch of influencers, mm -hmm. uh, people just like you, who, um, who talk about products and who share their thoughts and insights, mm -hmm. and they actually drive traffic to eBay so that people can connect to the things that they need and love. Yeah. And for me, I think that's incredible. So I have all these you know, marketing channels that are tried and true for us, like paid search or, um, or SEO. And, and what's been incredible to watch is the power of the influencer. Yeah. And influencers for us have been doing lots of things. They create collections, uh, they write articles, um, they do a lot of things that actually create advocacy for our brand um, and in, an excitement and energy for our brand. And, um, and we've been excited about that and we've seen um, it grow for us over the last uh, two years. I can imagine. Um, who are they? Who yeah. are these influencers? Sort of, where do you find them? Yeah. What makes a good one? Yeah. So, frankly, when we started on kind of our search to find uh, the the influencers for for eBay, uh, what we did is we just went online. We we were on Twitter. We so were on Facebook. We do you have were, people on staff who are just going through vines. Yeah, and looking for we have people who are just looking for people like you, who um, who can actually tell a story, uh, a story about you know great makeup or a story about the hottest trends in shoes or a story about motors and and parts and accessories and great cars or or electronics. These are people who you know talk about watches um, and and. And they tell an amazing story, and that story becomes so powerful to our audience. You know, mm -hmm. we have 150 million active users. We have 500 million listings at any given time. But if someone like you helps them to get through that, yeah. to weed through the 500 million listings to find that right thing because of something you told them, um, that's what's actually really powerful. Yeah. And so it's been exciting to watch. And then I actually have uh, a folks who are influencers actually on our staff. So I, uh, I have a woman, Nina, who writes our fashion blog and she does talks about uh, style stories. She has a whole section on the site that's all about fashion. Uh, I have another woman on our team, Annie, who does collections. So she weeds through um, that inventory and finds these beautiful, amazing products that she figures out and pulls together into these, to these incredible collections. And so it's, it's really a story that we're telling from external yeah. influencers as well as internal influencers to actually get people to the things they need and love, which are products that we have on our site. Yeah. It's maybe a sort of a silly question, but how do you actually find those people? Like, do you have people on your staff who are like looking for on a, how yeah and, and we hear about them too so that we have people on our staff we we have partnerships with twitter and with pinterest and others and there are people who are on those experiences and so we find them through there yeah. um there's just a lot of ways but it's it's really about people who have become passionate experts in a particular area yeah. what makes what makes a really good influencer what makes what makes someone someone who you'd want to pick you have to have a point of view uh, I think you have to have passion. You have to have something to say. And you, you have to have something that's unique, hmm. something that's really kind of special to you. And I think that's what's actually driving the connections that people have with influencers. And that's what we look for. We look for people that have a, a, a voice that feels very special, hmm. um, but one that actually is, um, it works well with our brand. Yeah. Um, and what are sort of the tools and platforms? I mean, kind of, I imagine a lot of people in the audience are on a lot of different social media platforms. What are the most useful ones um, and the ones where you're seeing there's real monetization happening? Um, is, it, is it Snapchat? Is it, uh, I don't know, is it um, Twitter? Is it yeah. Tinder? <laughs> I don't know how I could monetize my Tinder account, but I might be able to. I don't know that we have a deep connection with Tinder, but um, we might. It may be an underground marketing channel for us. I have no idea. Well, you know, you um, keep hearing about all these Snapchat stars who are making tons of money. Yeah, now. yeah. So, um, so yeah, there are lots of places. We're finding them everywhere, and um, it 
for us, it's about the people who are able to make connections. It's about the people who have strong followings, and it's the people who um, really do have a voice. I mean, that's that's what matters to us. And so they could be anywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, so they could be in this in this convention center, right? Yeah, exactly. They probably are. Absolutely. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, one thing I was thinking about this morning when I was thinking about this interview is that there's, there's, also, um, there's also a darker side to this. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a darker side to sort of monetizing our social media presences. Um, I was reading an article about, um, or by this, this man named Nick Confaloni, who was the, um, the Vine dad. And what he did was he had um, sort of a, a Vine account where he would do little Vines with his kid, and it became super, super popular. And then he started um, monetizing it. He got deals with Gap and with Klondike. And, um, and then he just wrote this story recently about how it really ruined it for him and kind of ruined mm. the joy of being a Vine star and like just the, the enjoyment yeah. of sharing. Um, can we go too far? Can this sort of make sharing not fun? So I believe that in everything we do, we have to have a connection. It has to map to the things that are important to us, and it has to align with our values and with our soul. And you know, there are days that are really super hard, mm -hmm. and there are days where we may not want to get out of bed. But if there's something that you enjoy and something that you love and something that feels good to you, um, then you get up and then you do it. Mm. And so I think that if you are doing something that stops connecting with you mm. and that compromises your values and makes your soul feel empty, then you probably shouldn't do it anymore. Mm. And so in that story, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like, and I did not read that story, so, but it sounds like he, it, it didn't become, it would stop being fun for him. Mm. And he felt like you said he was compromising his child and the relationship with his child and, and that doesn't feel good. Yeah. And so we have to do things that make us feel good yeah. and, um, and bring joy and excitement and energy. And not every day is gonna be you know, a barrel of laughs where we do cartwheels, but uh, when you're passionate about something, on those hard days, you're able to get up and actually do it. And so um, don't do things that compromise who you are. Don't do things that don't connect with your values. Don't do things that make you feel empty. Fair enough. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I think it's really interesting, actually. Um, kind of, if you were to look forward yeah. um, at, I know this is the 10th anniversary of this, and if we were to look forward five to 10 years, um, where is this going? Are we going to be monetizing all of our social media accounts? Like, could, could, I have 4,000 Facebook friends. Yeah. Could I monetize that influence? <laughs> could I have, be a product placement for J. Crew or something like that? So I think what's going to happen is, um, is personalization is going to get even deeper. Mm. So as the technology gets sharper, um, we are really going to be able to have one-to-one -one conversations where um, marketers are really going to be able to have a conversation with you. Uh, and, um, and I think that'll be rich. I think that everyday people will become marketers in some mm -hmm. way. So we have an affiliate program called eBay Partner Network. Some of you may be um, in that program. And you know, one of the things that we've been testing our way into is what we're calling micro-affiliates, where we start to pay everyday people for, um, for the endorsement uh, in some way, you know, for really driving traffic. So you talked about, you know, could you be a, could you get paid for mentioning J. How many micro endorsements do you guys have out right now? Oh, I don't know the number, but it, you know, it's, yeah. but that's, you can imagine that that could be an interesting world where there are everyday people who are able to monetize driving traffic to some of these incredible brands. Uh, and so, you know, I, I think that we'll start to see more of that. Um, and, you know, what we see is everyday people have become heroes and stars. Yeah. Uh, and as more heroes and stars get created um, and they have an attachment and an affinity to something, um, that attachment and affinity could actually make them money. 
and yeah. um, and so that's that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, and it's um, and I think that's part of the future. I think the other thing that we're going to continue to see is we're going to continue to see the rise of of, um, of voices and people actually sharing their points of view. Um, I think that we're going to continue to see brands listening and listening in new ways. I think that a lot of the connections that we have with social media is going to be about listening even harder. You know, so we do social customer service mm. and we do um, you know, a lot of kind of social listening where we get in the, the dialogue and we create messages that feel very relevant in those situations. I can imagine that that will become smarter. Yeah. It'll feel less intrusive. And, um, How will it become smarter? Through data, yeah. uh, as we test and learn, you know. So a lot of um, companies like eBay, we test our way into a bunch of things, and we see what's working and not working, and we yeah. shift if, if it doesn't. Uh, and I think data will help us to even get smarter about how we get in those conversations. Hmm. Interesting. Um, what trends have you seen? So this seems like it's been just in the last sort of year or two. Yeah. Um, when did this start? Maybe tell me about how, when you guys first started seeing um, Instagram celebrities rise up and, and then how you um, sort of spun around and figured out how to make money off of that or turn them into. Yeah, so we actually built our influencer strategy uh, about two and a half years ago. Okay. And we launched it really about two years ago and um, we've really grown it over mm -hmm. time. Uh, what we have is we have influencers across a number of categories, uh, fashion, uh, electronics, parts and accessories and motors, and home and garden. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's mainly because those are the categories that are yeah, uh, the top for us. And then we obviously have our collectibles um, business and we have a lot of influencers. Um, some of the influencers are people that are kind of well known in social, social channels, but some of them have become our sellers. Or, or were sellers, and their voices actually have been able to matter um, in different ways. And you know, for instance, we have a, a guy on our platform who sells beautiful antique men's watches. He's an expert in this. He's been doing this for 25 years, uh, and he is. He has a voice. He has something yeah. to say, uh, and he is an, you know can be. He's an influencer on our channel, and so yeah. you can imagine that you know we have all these experts, these sellers on the platform, in addition to people that just have a point of view on um, on some of these key categories. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to this audience? Because I know a lot of people here have sort of enormous social media presences yeah. and, and influence. What advice would you give on how to monetize that, and sort of what are the tools that people should be looking at and what, what should we be doing looking forward? I, I, you know, I, I said I it before. Hard one. No, I, I think I said it before though. I think, I think you have to really be an expert. Yeah. I think you have to um, have something that you're really passionate about and create a story yeah. uh, and a point of view and have a, uh, a real message. Yeah. And I think that you know, those things get listened to. And I think that as you hone your audience, you have to nurture your audience. You have to learn who the people are that are listening to you, uh, and you have to figure out what it is that they need more of. Sometimes they don't know what they need, and you have to help them, uh, but sometimes they need a whole lot more of the stuff that you're already giving them. And so you have to kind of know who's, know who's listening, know who's behind you, uh, and nurture that along the way, because, yeah. um, because people are a little fickle. And so you might be their favorite today and someone else may be their favorite tomorrow. <laughs> and so figure out what it is that they need so that they can continue mm. uh, to be a part of you. Um, and then figure out how you build your own brand advocates, right? It's people who actually are supporting and endorsing you and actually telling your message um, and bringing more people along your journey. Uh, because you're not going to be able to do it all your own. Uh, you're going to need people to actually talk about how amazing you are. And, mm. uh, and so that'll be important too. That's interesting. Um, and then I also wanted to ask about sort of the gender issues here, because women are, I mean, I think the predominant users of social media in general, and, and so what does it mean if um, then, like how does that then influence e-commerce? If, if, um, if women become, if, if social media becomes really influential on e-commerce, do women become more influential in that space? Wow, that's a tough question. I know, it's sort of an, it's. <laughs> so, um, 
So a lot of the time I spend um, inside of work and outside of the work is about empowering and inspiring mm. our next generation of women leaders. And particularly I focus on women in technology because there are not a lot of women in technology. And I think that what we have to do is we have to be there and support one another. Mm. Uh, we have to understand the journeys of others who've come before us and who are on the path with us. And we have to be there for one another. And I think it's conferences like this. I think it's programs like Girls Who Code. It's other things that I think are uh, incredibly important to helping to ensure that women continue to have a place and a voice. Yeah. Uh, I think that we have to stand up and uh, not be shy. We have to be prepared to tell our story and tell our story often to as many people as we can. Uh, and we have to path the way for the next generation because they're the ones that are gonna have to uh, pull it forward as we um, continue. And so um, it's a fun time to be here yeah. because we have programs like um, like all the things that you guys are, are involved in and, and this conference and this is about learning from each other and supporting one another. And um, that's how we're actually all gonna rise and that's how we're all gonna be successful and that's how we're all gonna make money. <laughs> and so uh, we, we need to do it together. That's perfect. Um, we have one minute. Do we wanna ask questions or anything? Or? I wanna ask you a question. You wanna ask me a question, is that allowed? Is it allowed? Can I ask her a question? So, as a female journalist who's mm -hmm. focused on kind of this area in technology, mm -hmm. what would you say to women like you who are telling stories every day? Uh, what is it about what you do um, that can help other women? Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I think women just have to be loud. Um, I think. <laughs> I think, and, and not shy. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I don't know, bossy, assertive, all of that stuff. I think that that's really important. And so in, in my stories, I, I cover women's issues um, quite a bit, and maybe not quite as intensely as I should. Um, but I do try to keep it in mind in my writing um, and in, my, in the stories I tell, yeah. certainly. It's actually been really interesting to be a tech reporter and notice um, myself, I cover a lot of parties and events and notice myself in situations where I'm the only woman in a room or mm -hmm. one of two women in a room. And then how do you tell a story that's nuanced about that story um, while also taking into account that, you know, the background of it is it's all men. Yeah. Um, it's hard. And, and I think one of the things you have to do is you f have to figure out what you will do to get your voice heard. So I have women who I mentor all the time who say to me, you know, I'm in this room and, and there's all men at the table and I have something to say and no one is listening. Uh, and, and you have to figure out what it'll take to get your voice heard. Mm -hmm. And you have to play around with it and do all kinds of tricks uh, to figure that out. And, um, and so what I'd say to you is get your voice heard, have a point of view and say it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much.